In the third part of the lecture about sound and music, I will discuss the formation of the harmonic series in wind instruments and also the phenomenon of beats. Wind instruments are based on the principle of passing air through a cavity. Based on how the sound waves are formed when air passes through a cavity, we have two types of wind instruments. We have wind instruments with two open ends, so air can pass from one end to the other. And then we have instruments with one open end where air enters the open end, reflects from the closed end and comes out again from the open end. The visualization of the standing waves that can form in a wind instrument will be the same as standing waves on a string. Even though the standing wave patterns are a mixture of compressions and rarefactions, it is much easier to visualize the patterns as the waves on a string. So, for example, this would be the picture of a standing wave of a certain harmonic that is excited inside this wind instrument with two open ends. And this is the visualization of a certain harmonic standing wave excited in a wind instrument with one closed end. The most important condition when we consider wind instruments with two open ends is that we always have antinodes at the two openings. So let's consider a pipe with length L. I want to find a relationship between the wavelength of the standing wave that is formed inside the pipe and the physical length of the pipe. So the first wave with the longest wavelength that I can fit in the pipe will have antinodes, the standing wave of that wave will have antinodes at the two openings. And that means that inside the pipe there will be also an antinode. And so this is the standing wave pattern that's excited inside this pipe. We have two antinodes, one at each end, and we have a node straight in the middle of the pipe. So then from the form of the standing wave pattern, we can tell that each branch is a quarter of a wavelength. So then by simply counting the branches, one, two branches, that gives us relationship to the length of the pipe. So quarter wavelength plus, plus quarter of wavelength is equal to the length of the pipe. So half of the wavelength of the wave excited in the pipe is equal to the length of the pipe. So then I am ready to write down the wavelength of the first harmonic generated in the pipe. And the wavelength lambda 1 is equal to 2 times the length of the pipe. Now let's do the frequency of the first harmonic. To be able to write an expression for the frequency of the first harmonic, again, I'm going to use the relationship between the speed of the wave, the wavelength, and the frequency. So the speed of the first harmonic will be the product of the wavelength and the frequency of the first harmonic. So the first harmonic from here is equal to V divided by lambda 1. And using the result that I have for lambda 1, I get that the first harmonic is equal to V divided by 2 times the length of the pipe. When I discussed the harmonics of 
stringed instruments, the speed V was the speed of the wave in the string. Here, since now we have sound waves that are excited in air, this speed here, V, will be the speed of sound in air. So V is the speed of sound in air. So here are my two expressions that I will need to generalize or de derive a general formula for the harmonics in a wind instrument with two open ends. Now let's look at the second harmonic for a pipe. The standing wave that corresponds to the second harmonic excited in the pipe we have two nodes and again two antinodes and the openings as the initial condition that I stated requires. The length of the pipe itself is L. So again, I want to find a relationship between the wavelength of the wave inside the pipe and the physical length of the pipe. So let's look at the branches of the wave inside the pipe. So here we have lambda over 4, here we have half of a wavelength, and here again we have a quarter of a wavelength. And the same we have here, quarter of a wavelength, one half of the wavelength, and again quarter of the wavelength. So from the standing wave pattern here, we see that the physical length of the pipe corresponds to one quarter plus one half plus another quarter of the wavelength. So we have one quarter plus one half plus one quarter wavelength, which is two halves wavelengths is equal to the length of the pipe. Or in other words, the wavelength of the second harmonic is equal to two times the length of the pipe divided by two. Now let's do the fundamental, now let's do the frequency of the second harmonic. Again, I'm going to use the relationship between the speed of the wave, the wavelength, and the frequency. So V is equal to lambda 2 times F2. From here, F2 is equal to V divided by lambda 2. Substituting lambda 2 with 2L divided by 2 gives me the final result. The frequency of the second harmonic is 2 times the speed of sound in air divided by 2 times the length of the pipe. So these are the two important results related to the second harmonic. Now let's do the third harmonic and then I'll be able to generalize the expression for any harmonic excited inside a pipe with two open ends. So here is the standing wave that corresponds to the third harmonic inside the pipe. We have three nodes and antinodes at the ends. Again, the length of the pipe is L. Let's see What's the relationship between the wavelength of the wave excited in the pipe and the physical length of the pipe? So if we have a quarter of a wavelength for this branch, one half of the wavelength here, another one half, and then another quarter. So the physical length of the pipe corresponds to a quarter plus a half plus a half plus another quarter of the wavelength. So we have quarter lambda plus 2 lambda divided by 2 plus lambda divided by 4 that is equal to 3 halves lambda and that is equal to the length of the pipe from here the wavelength of the third harmonic is 2 times the length of the pipe divided by 3 now let's do the frequency of the third harmonic again i'm using the relationship between the speed of sound in air the wavelength of the third harmonic and the frequency of the third harmonic so v is equal to lambda 3 times f3 from here, the frequency F3 is equal to the speed of sound divided by the wavelength of the third harmonic, substituting 2L divided by 3 for the wavelength right here, gives me the final result. The third harmonic frequency F3 is equal to 3 times the speed of sound in air divided by 2 times the length of the pipe. Now I'm ready to derive a general expression for the wavelengths and for the frequencies of the harmonics excited inside a wind instrument with two open ends. So here is the summary of the first three harmonics. 
the wavelengths and the frequencies. This looks exactly the same as the harmonics for string instruments. Therefore, I can use the exact same general formulas that I derived before. So the wavelength for each harmonic is calculated as twice the length of the pipe divided by the number of the harmonic. The frequency of each harmonic is calculated as the number of the harmonic times the speed of sound in air divided by two times the length of the pipe. And here it is very important to remember that V is the speed of sound in air. In the previous set of formulas for stringed instruments, V was the speed of the wave in the string. So that is the only difference between the two sets. Now let's look at the formation of harmonics in wind instruments with one end closed. Consider a pipe with one end open, the other end is closed. So to generate a standing wave in the pipe, a sound wave must come in from the open end. It will reflect from the closed end and come out again through the open end. In order to be able to hear the sound created by this sound wave in the pipe, I need to have an antinode of the standing wave pattern at the opening of the pipe. And of course, since the wave will reflect from the closed end, there will be a node at the closed end. So let's see what the first harmonic looks like. Here is the first harmonic. So we have a wave that has a node at the closed end, antinode at the open end, and the two branches are equal to a quarter of the wavelength. Let's see how that relates to the physical length of the pipe L. So we have quarter of the wavelength matches the physical length of the pipe. So quarter of the wavelength is equal to the length of the pipe, or in other words, the wavelength of the first harmonic excited in this pipe with one end closed is equal to four times the length of the pipe. We now see the difference compared to two open ends. For two open ends, the first harmonic wavelength was twice the length of the pipe. Let's also now derive the frequency of the first harmonic. Using the same derivation as before, the speed of sound in of the wave is equal to the wavelength of the first harmonic times the frequency of the first harmonic from here. The frequency of the first harmonic is equal to the speed of sound divided by the wavelength of the first harmonic, substituting the wavelength with 4 times L gives us that the first harmonic frequency is equal to the speed of sound divided by 4 times the length of the pipe. Now let's consider what's the next harmonic. The next standing wave pattern that can be created will have two nodes inside the pipe and again an antinode at the opening. The branch here is half of the wavelength and this branch here is quarter of the wavelength and this branch here is quarter of the wavelength and this branch here is half of the wavelength. Again, let's take the length of the pipe to be L. Let's see then what's the length of this harmonic compared to the physical length of the pipe. So we have half of the wavelength plus quarter of the wavelength, which is three quarters of the wavelength, fit the length of the pipe. From there, the wavelength, which I'm going to label with lambda 3, is equal to four times the length of the pipe divided by 3. The reason I'm labeling this with lambda 3 and not lambda 2 is because there are no harmonics with even numbered um, so there are no even numbered harmonics that can be excited in a wind instrument with one end closed. Only odd numbered harmonics can be excited. We are going to see when I get to the point to derive the general rule for 
calculating the wavelengths and the frequencies of those harmonics that we have only the odd numbered harmonics available. Now let's calculate the frequency for the third harmonic here. Now I know that in the title here I said the second harmonic, but I wanted to really make a contrast with actually what we are calculating. So this is the third harmonic. So the more appropriate name here would be third harmonic. So again, when we are dealing with wind instruments with one end closed, we only have odd numbered harmonics. So first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and so on and so forth. Now let's go back to calculating the frequency of that third harmonic. So the third harmonic frequency F3 is equal to three times the speed of sound in air divided by four times the length of the pipe. Again, the third harmonic frequency is equal to three times the speed of sound in air divided by four times the length of the pipe. So let's do the next harmonic. So here is the standing wave that corresponds to the fifth harmonic that can be excited in this pipe with one end closed. We have three nodes and an anti-node at the opening. So the first branch here is half of the wavelength. This branch also half of the wavelength and this is quarter of the wavelength and the same for those other branches the length of the pipe again i'm going to select to be l let's see how the wavelength relates to the length of the pipe so we have two times lambda divided by two plus lambda over four that is equal to five fourths lambda that is equal to the length of the pipe or in other words the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is four times the length of the pipe divided by five. And the fifth harmonic frequency F5 is equal to five times the speed of sound in air divided by four times the length of the pipe. Now I'm ready to derive general formulas for all harmonics that can be excited in a pipe with one end closed. So here we see that for the wavelengths of the harmonics, we have four times the length of the pipe divided by one, then by three, then by five. And so for the following harmonics, the wave, the four times the length of the pipe will be divided by an odd number. Then for the frequencies, we see that the coefficient in front of the speed of sound is one, then three, then five. So therefore for the following harmonics, the coefficients will be also odd numbers. The general formulas then for the wavelengths and the frequencies of the harmonics that can be excited in a wind instrument with one end closed are the wavelengths are equal to four times the length of the pipe divided by n, where n is an odd number. And for the frequencies, we have n times the speed of sound in air divided by four times the length of the pipe with with n being an odd number. The next concept that I want to discuss is the concept of beats. So when two sound sources emit sound waves with nearly equal frequencies, an effect known as beats is produced. The new sound has a frequency which we call f beat that has a and has a variable amplitude so the new sound produced has a frequency f beat and has variable amplitude or intensity the beat frequency is calculated as the difference of the frequencies of the two waves that interact with each other so here is an image of two waves before and after interaction. Here are the two waves. They have very close frequencies. And when the two waves interact with each other, this new wave is formed that has a frequency that is equal to the beat frequency, which is calculated as this difference. And it has variable intensity, as you can see, we have regions here with high intensity and regions with low intensities, followed by regions with high intensity and then regions with low intensity and so on and so forth.
So the intensity of the beat wave is constantly changing with time. With this, I'm going to finish the lecture on sound and music.